Hi everyone. Today we're going to actually take a deeper dive in breaking down the contextualization tool. You may have seen the first video. I designed it for all high school teachers for all ages and the truth is that this it'll work for all of high school but I'm eventually going to really focus on this using grade 10. How to break down the contextualization tool. When students see it, when I see it, I get nervous. Um, I need to break things down into pieces. So how are we going to do that? Smaller chunks, right? So it says contextualization tool, a very short version of a very long story. Um, I already made a video. It's somewhere on the Passport channel or on the New York City's um, Department of Education channel, Teaching and Learning, um, which explains contextualization. But there's a whole lot of directions here. They think it's looking around history about forces. Contextualization is a short. Just, just let's take a step back, okay? We're going on to think about if someone introduced you to something, what is the backstory you need to know? So step one, before you go anywhere, first and foremost, you're going to look at the title of the person, group, or event, whatever the source gives you. Next, you're going to look for any relevant dates, beginning, end, middle, any date you need to know. Location, notice there's an S. And a brief description, like what is this source talking about? This, you're basically telling us like where your source comes in okay now you're going to go back here and you see this whole chart at the bottom it says contextualization tool short version of a long story i need to break that down too let's check this out they have two columns now i color coded because i need to see like what everything is you have the immediate view meaning what forces they say acted upon the person meaning what made that happen group or event close to the time it occurred meaning close to the time meaning somewhere right then versus the distant view long-term forces acted upon the person group or event so this is like right media view is right before distant view is long-term forces okay now i color coded it so we have let's get a load of this one intellectual forces socioeconomic forces are blue political forces are purple geographic forces are pink and then there's some general questions you always want to think about those are yellow so let's look at this now intellectual forces for immediate and long term um it's basically what were people thinking about how did they think this is for immediate Socioeconomic, was it a time of economic growth, decline, or crisis? How's the economy doing? What was social structure? That's social, meaning people, economic, meaning money. Okay, political forces. Boom. What type of political system was the person group event? Meaning, what's the politics? Was it stable or unstable? Okay. And who was, who held the power? Which to me is super important. Who held the power? Who was in charge? How did it? influence other people than geographic forces, right? How did the location or geographic resources influence something? Environmental forces, nearby people. And then finally, general question, which I always say to keep in mind, most important historical circumstances that affected the person, group, or event. Now, distant, long-term forces, meaning you're going way back versus immediate view could, I would say, be like, the few years before distant forces is like say this is my guesstimate at least 25 years before intellectual meaning how did long-term people's philosophies think about things and influence things how did that change things socioeconomic forces long-term economic structures how did that influence things politics changes in political systems long-term changes and geographic you know that it means places how did things going on with the place and the environment and relationship go on and then let's look at those general questions again enduring issues you know that social studies term your teacher drives you crazy about how did that influence um i chose not to use the word impacted um because when i see impacted i think of a tooth just ignore me what enduring issues influence the person group or event why is it relevant to you and why is that connected to you or the unit so basically it's these four different categories intellectual socioeconomic political geographic and then the general question for the immediate and the distant if you know what all of them are you can kind of label things label the sources as you go through for each one of them but those general question is i i would always keep in the back of my head 
most significant immediate circumstance? And then the general question is, um, how is it relevant and why is it connected to this unit? This is the actual contextualization tool organizer. This is kind of like the explanation, which could be confusing. This is the organizer. Now I need to break the organizer down too. Um, it tells you all sorts of things that you should do, could do, would do. Um, I need to say stop. Okay. At step one, when I say stop is, let's see, I could do this. Let's go back to the first box on the previous page. Okay. That I can do. Like what's going on beforehand. So let's go back to the first box on the previous page. It's that basic information, you know, the title group event, relevant dates, location, brief description. But remember, you're not writing a shopping list. Okay. You're getting specific. Now they have this whole thing here, immediate view, distant view, a bunch of charts. I will get overwhelmed. So I need to unpack this. Let's do that. Okay. And we already looked at this. If you watched the video before this contextualization is the process of constructing a narrative. You're saying what came before, um, the forces that made something happen. Now, as I showed you earlier in this video, I color coded intellectual, meaning th the thoughts, philosophies, socioeconomic, people, money, politics, meaning who was in charge and geography. So some of these forces, it says are again, these four things. Now, if you're going to start looking for all four, it's technically possible in a source, but you probably want to try to stick to one or two of them so you don't go crazy. But in the meantime, I just want to show something to you. Okay. If you can want to talk about intellectual forces, okay, start color coding. If your teacher gives you an organizer, if you have highlighters, okay, or maybe you could print this out in color. That would be amazing if you're working on your own, or if you could turn it to Google Slides if you're working on your own. These are all text boxes. And I've color coded it to match it up for you. Look, we had intellectual that matched back to the green, what people were thinking about. He pulled, okay, social economic, money, and how people relate to each other. Politics is government. Then you have geography, meaning location, right? You might want to color code them for yourself that when you go back and start looking at all these sources and you're asked to contextualize, I know I got to fix up my boxes so they line up straight. Um, yeah, we can move it over a drop. Yeah, we got this. Um, when you contextualize, you can just fill it in by color. It might make it easier for you. The other thing you could do is you can make yourself a nice big yellow question mark and put it wherever you'd like. You could even write it down the bottom or if you break up the organizer, redraw the chart. Because remember, you have to also answer that those general questions for the immediate, which is how did this kind of, let's go back here and remind ourselves, what was the most significant immediate historical circumstances that affected this person, group, or event? And then for the long term, the enduring issue that influence the person group event relevant to you relevant to the unit so if you color code it it might help you it also might help you if you're looking or you're doing this to kind of make yourself another kind of code like i did here contextualization we're looking at the immediate view i kind of took like i imagine myself writing it with a sharpie that word immediate view and then distant view i kind of took a typewriter because that's like the older story from going back to what was you know going back to today's time. So they say, look at the immediate view first and then look for the longer story. Sometimes I tell my students, just think what went on in the past, whatever it was around 25 years before that's connected to the event. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. That's just my safety that I give to my students. So when they see something that looks like this, they don't flip out. They say, hey, we're gonna break this down. We're gonna take this step by step. And I think you could do the same thing. Go back, watch the video again maybe review. And if you notice, we haven't actually formed the contextualization paragraph yet. We will do that. We have to look at some sources before we synthesize and put everything together. But we did look at the top. We did look at the middle. Yes, we did color code. And think about those general questions. I know it's a lot. You probably want to watch this again to clarify things for yourself, but slow and steady. You got this.